It looks like machined parts, but you know, that's how I built my business. I just like used what I got, you know, and made it look like I had some expensive shop do it, but I just did it myself in my garage, you know. Jesse James is an automotive mechanic, entrepreneur, and television personality who founded the famous West Coast Choppers. Most fans know Jesse as the brain behind West Coast Choppers, but not many know him as the co-founder of Austin Speed Shop and the host of Monster Garage. Aside from Jesse's work as a mechanic, he also has various businesses like his clothing line, a chain of restaurants, and a firearm company that contribute massively to his net worth. Jesse is an all-rounder when it comes to business, but it's been a while since his fans heard from him. What really happened to Jesse James from Austin Speed Shop? 2010, I had a shop and 200 employees, completely vertical manufacturing. I was miserable. Sometimes bigger and more money and more responsibility and more bull****. That's not success. Jesse Gregory James was born to American parents on April 19, 1969. Jesse's childhood is far from ideal as he grew up around his father's antique business. Jesse's parents separated when he was a child, so he never had a parental guide. He grew up stealing cars since his father's business took his time, and he had no time for little Jesse. Jesse's rough childhood got him into lots of trouble, but as a child, he got away with most of his crimes. Jesse once admitted to stealing Olympian Scott Hamilton's brand new car some years ago and apologized on TV. He happened to have stolen the green on green Porsche 911 in his teens and stripped it down to axles just months after Hamilton had purchased it. Jesse scaled through all hurdles and had his education at the University of California in Riverside, where he was an outside linebacker for his school's team, but an injury forced him off the team, and he was left with no option than to consider working a 9-to-5. At age 19, Jesse began his career as a bouncer and bodyguard for influential personalities before saving up to open West Coast Customs in his mother's garage. Jesse's sudden career change came from his passion for cars, and that change paid off. While working on his new garage, Jesse was featured in a documentary titled Motorcycle Mania, which was his breakthrough. The documentary became so popular that Discovery offered Jesse the chance to host a new reality show, Monster Garage. Working on the show opened more opportunities for Jesse, as he had time and freedom to hone his skills and establish himself as one of the few competent fabricators in the United States. Over the years, Jesse has become synonymous with Monster Garage because he understood the assignment. The show propelled him to be one of the top guns of automobile restoration. Jesse's impact is still felt as one of the pioneers of auto reality TV shows. Talking about Jesse back in the 2000s is like talking about a demigod. He brings his A-game to the show and makes viewers and fans fall in love with the show, irrespective of the project he's working on. With his prowess, Jesse was confident of landing a better gig after his time at Monster Garage was up, but the show that got his signature was a speed show that surrounded his speed shop in Austin, Texas. Austin Speed Shop was born as the crew wanted to rekindle those moments of magic viewers felt back in the 2000s when Monster Garage was airing, and the only man they thought could pull such magic was none other than Jesse James. A famous phrase says, catching lightning in a bottle is incredibly difficult to do more than once. The crew copied the exact format of Monster Garage and even featured the show's main character, but there was no guarantee that the show would pull such moments of magic as its predecessor. When Austin Speed Shop eventually made it to TV, it was more of a disaster for Jesse and the show producers. The show ended after three episodes and faded into oblivion. Yes, it was so bad that only a few people remember that such a show once existed. Although Jesse has gone to feature in other reality TV shows, none made his fans glued to their TVs like Monster Garage. Aside from Jesse's rough childhood and a failed reality TV show, Jesse has been involved in many controversies over the years, and the latest one is his marriage. Jesse is married with three kids, but behind his married life is a story full of heartbreak, scandals, and lawsuits. Jesse had two kids with his first wife, Carla James, whom he was married to from 1991 to 2002, before marrying an adult film star Janine Lindemolder, who bore him a girl before their marriage crashed in 2004. After the second divorce in just five years, Jesse married his third wife, Sandra Bullock, in 2005, who later became his business partner. 
Jesse and Sandra Bullock partner to open an eco-friendly restaurant that doesn't use preservatives for their foods and also keeps all food fresh. The duo were married for seven years, but divorced after a scandal rocked their marriage, ending their restaurant business. Apparently, Jesse had been seeing other girls while he was married to Sandra and kept it a secret until the women came to public to reveal all that transpired between them. The news made Sandra cancel her European promotional appearance for The Blind Side, while Jesse publicly apologized to his wife and kids. After making a public apology, Jesse also checked into a rehabilitation facility to save his marriage. While Jesse made a good move to restore sanity at home, Sandra wasn't having any of it. She later filed for divorce on April 28, 2010, stating a conflict of interest as the reason. Jesse shared the same goals as Bullock, so it's understandable why he had to go to extra lengths to rectify his marriage to Sandra. They both owned a restaurant and even planned on adopting a baby boy, which Sandra did after their divorce was finalized. You had mm -hmm. the perfect wife. Why did you throw it away? I don't know. You know, it, during the midst of all of it and when I was doing it, I, one, I knew it was horrible. It made me feel horrible. Before Jesse and Sandra's final divorce, Jesse's ex-wife and adult movie star Janine Lindemulder was charged with tax evasion. She was sentenced to six months in a federal prison in the United States. After her release, she sought to regain custody of the daughter she had for Jesse after he had been granted sole custody. Jesse, however, sought to retain full custody of his daughter, saving his ex-wife's environment would not be a good place for the little girl. Jesse was eventually granted full custody, while Janine was granted weekly visitation of the little girl after the hearing. In 2010, Jesse sparked up rumors of dating a strange girl, and after a few months, Kat Von D, a tattoo artist, confirmed the rumor that she was the strange girl Jesse had been going out with. Jesse and his new lover got engaged in 2011, and after a few months, they announced they had split. Kat Von D later revealed in the same year that she had reconciled with Jesse in August, and just a few months later, they announced they had broken up after Kat Von accused Jesse of cheating on her. Jesse, however, decided to give Love a chance again in 2012 after he got engaged to Alexis DeJuris, a drag racer. The duo married in 2013 and had seven years of bliss before Jesse announced their separation in 2020. Jesse, who announced the split via his social media page, stated, Our lives were headed in different directions. Jesse eventually took a break from love till late 2021 when he announced that he had been in a relationship with ex-adult film star Bonnie Rotten. The lovebirds tied the knot in June 2022 and are still married as of 2023. Hopefully, Jesse will get it right this time. Jesse's controversies didn't end with marriages. He's also been involved with legal issues over the years. The most significant one has to be with the California Air Resources Board after he was fined $271,250 for selling motorcycles that were not in compliance with California's clean air laws. According to the authorities, Jesse's motorcycles emit more than the approved hydrocarbons, which could hinder an eco-friendly environment. Jesse was also found wanting after an investigation revealed that his motorcycles did not have state-certified emissions equipment on their fuel tanks. Still, Jesse defended himself, stating he sold the motorcycles between 1997 and 2006 and was unaware of rule changes that mandated law. Also, in 2008, Jesse faced a $422,680 breach of contract lawsuit from a client who hired him to build a custom car. Jesse apparently failed to fulfill the promise of delivering the car within the stipulated time after charging over $600,000 in fees. During that period, Jesse faced another lawsuit, but this time from his former lawyer over unpaid fees. Since Jesse fell off the limelight, he's been living a simple lifestyle managing his business and staying clear of controversies. But there are speculation of Monsters Garage Reboot, which will be hosted by the legendary fabricator himself, Jesse James. Although no reliable source has verified the information, we hope it's true.